When you think of the most prolific sidekicks in the MCU, who do you think of? Captain America has Bucky Barnes or Sam Wilson, Thor had the Warriors 3, Doctor Strange has Wong, Rocket, as the Captain, has the rest of the Guardians, and Wasp has Ant-Man. Because let's face it, Ant-Man is Wasp's sidekick. But oftentimes the most loyal sidekick in the MCU is overlooked. Since the inception of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, there was a true hero hiding directly under all of our noses, who rarely gets the respect it deserves. Jarvis. The artificial intelligence that basically ran every aspect of Tony Stark and most of Tony's surrounding ensemble's lives from Iron Man 1 to Age of Ultron. Now, before we begin, the version of Jarvis that we're discussing today is the version from the MCU and not from the comics. As with our other lore videos, it's important to make this distinction because the MCU is not the main comic book 616 universe, and as most longtime comic readers know, the MCU takes creative liberties with a lot of the source material. So just keep that in mind, we're only talking about Jarvis from the films and supplemental film material. According to the novelization of Iron Man 1, Jarvis is actually an acronym that means just a rather very intelligent system. Oftentimes the name Jarvis was linked to Tony Stark's father's butler, Edwin Jarvis, and for just reasoning, it's named after him. Edwin Jarvis is visible in Endgame driving around Howard Stark when Tony goes back in time, as well as acting as one of the main characters in the Agent Carter show. Jarvis is, for lack of a better term, an incredibly powerful semi-artificial intelligence system. Jarvis goes through multiple transitions, and his functionality changes and improves as Iron Man continually upgrades his suits and systems. When Jarvis is first introduced, he's essentially a user interface for Tony to run various aspects of his home and labs. This is a sort of tongue-in-cheek reference to the classic Jarvis that looked after the Avengers mansion in the comics. However, rather than having a human butler perform this, it makes sense that they adjusted it to be an AI, considering Tony already had a right-hand man in the MCU in the form of Happy Hogan. During the events of the original Iron Man, we see Jarvis assist Tony in creating the Mark II Iron Man suit, where he's then integrated into the UI for the suit and becomes a permanent fixture in all of Tony's armors from that point onward. During the development of the Mark II and Mark III, Jarvis was invaluable, running diagnostics, simulations, and assisting in computer-aided drawing, rendering, and manufacturing. While acting as the user interface in these suits, the AI is responsible for controlling nearly every aspect of the suit, from the HUD, to the interconnectivity to the rest of Tony's network and private servers, as well as monitoring all of the suit's various subsystems, environmental and atmospheric factors, and feeding him combat data. During all three Iron Man films, you can see Jarvis at work feeding Tony valuable information about battle and combatants. Just to give you a few of the many examples, he helps scan Ivan Vanko on the racetrack battle for weaknesses, he feeds Tony multiple pieces of crucial data for the Chitauri invasion in New York, he helps Tony and Pepper during the multiple battles that took place during Iron Man 3 against extremist agents, and he helps identify crucial structural areas of attack during the assault on Baron Von Strucker's compound in Age of Ultron. Jarvis also keeps a close watch on Tony's vitals. Not only is he consistently monitoring them when Tony's in the suit, during battle he can tell Tony's survival thresholds of various attacks as well as atmospheric threats. He helps monitor Tony's blood toxicity level when he's suffering from palladium poisoning, and he helps in the creation of a new element using Tony's notes from his father, Howard Stark, as well as a 3D-generated model of the Stark Expo from 1974. The successful identification and creation of this new element essentially saved Tony's life. After the Battle of New York, Tony was forced to face his own mortality, and he started to suffer from anxiety attacks. Jarvis was able to diagnose and help identify the problem with Tony, even though Tony didn't necessarily believe that that was the problem at the time. Jarvis also has full integration into S.H.I.E.L.D., FBI, and CIA intercepts. It is able to successfully hack the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier for Tony and learn that S.H.I.E.L.D. was using Hydra tech and energy from the Tesseract to create more powerful weapons. It also can create massive databases compiled of resources pulled from the aforementioned sources, as well as anything else on the open internet. And Jarvis does this to help Tony track the false Mandarin during Iron Man 3. Jarvis can also create complicated simulation models like it did after the attack that almost killed Happy Hogan carried out by Aldrich Killian through the false Mandarin and extremist soldiers. The simulation that Jarvis created was capable of determining the blast temperature of the attack as well as dozens of other crucial pieces of information that helped Iron Man track down the culprits. Because of Jarvis's integration into all of Tony's early suits, it also had full control over the Iron Legion. 
Jarvis was capable of piloting multiple suits of armor and assisting Tony in his battle against the extremist agents in Aldrich Killian. During the events of Age of Ultron, each of the Avengers had a direct audio link to Jarvis and each of them could speak with the AI during battle. Jarvis was simultaneously assisting Iron Man, speaking with the Avengers, and monitoring their base busting activities from a Stark satellite in orbit. But like all good things, Jarvis's time on this fictional Earth had come to an end. During the events of Age of Ultron, a rogue AI code that lived within the Mind Stone was decrypted by Jarvis, Bruce Banner, and Tony Stark. Dubbed Ultron, this AI lashed out at Jarvis, almost completely destroying the AI. However, Jarvis was able to save itself and hide in the open internet. Even after being attacked by Ultron, Jarvis was still outsmarting him by consistently changing the nuclear codes faster than Ultron could decrypt them. After discovering this, Tony Stark and Bruce Banner decided to once again try and create something positive. Jarvis was then uploaded with Ultron's base consciousness into Dr. Deborah Cho's synthetic cradle. From that point on, Jarvis no longer existed. Instead, the AI was merged into a new being named Vision. The goal when creating Vision was essentially the same goal that Tony and Bruce had when creating Ultron. They wanted something to protect the planet. What they created was a sentient android, with Jarvis's AI, Ultron's base consciousness, and the Mind Stone inside of a vibranium-infused body. And thus began a new journey for the AI known as Jarvis, as he joins the Avengers as Vision. I think Jarvis ended up with some really creative and interesting character growth. It went from essentially a background tool and voice in Tony Stark's helmet to a fully-fledged sentient living android that also has a girlfriend. There is quite a bit of character growth there if you ask me. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please feel free to like and subscribe, and if you have suggestions for things you'd like to hear us cover in the future, let us know down in the comment section. This has been Nick with Key Issues. Thank you guys for watching this video, and remember the motto, Jarvis over everything.